This is the iPhone 13 Pro, and this is the iPhone 14 Pro. And today we're going to be comparing the mapping capabilities of both of these phones using the camera and LiDAR sensors to do photogrammetry and LiDAR scanning. The iPhone 14 Pro's LiDAR sensor is pretty similar to the iPhone 13 Pro's. The sensors do look a little bit different, however, the specifications of both are the same. Now, Apple did upgrade one of the cameras on the iPhone 14 Pro to be a 48 megapixel camera in comparison to a 12 megapixel camera. However, the 48 megapixel camera is only going to work on the standard camera app when you enable the raw feature, and this is not available on third party apps that we use for mapping. Now, Apple also did announce the crash detection feature on the iPhone 14 Pro. This feature enhances the gyroscope and accelerometer in the phone, and the main purpose is to detect when a user is in a car accident and notifies his law enforcement. However, in the mapping world, this means that we have a more improved gyroscope and accelerometer, which means we can measure the movement of the phone more accurately. But does that mean it improves the mapping capabilities on the 14 Pro in comparison to the 13 Pro? And so today we're going to be mapping out this portion of the playground using both the iPhone 13 Pro and 14 Pro. The goal is to measure the accuracy of first of the LiDAR sensors by going around and mapping this playground. Now we've set up a bunch of reflective targets around the playground and measured these targets using a total station. Using the reflectorless feature on a total station, we're able to measure the coordinates of every single one of these points and taking the distance between points on the total station as reference. And then what we get out of both of these phones will allow us to calculate the accuracy of the LiDAR sensor. Once we've calculated the accuracies, we're then going to utilize all of the sensors in these phones, including the LiDAR sensor, the camera sensors, the gyroscope, accelerometers, and the built-in GPS receivers to help us reconstruct this portion of the playground. And we'll be comparing the 13 Pro and the 14 Pro's 3D models to see which one performed better in doing a 3D reconstruction. Now we're going to be utilizing two different apps in this video. The first will be 3D scanner app, which will allow us to compare the LiDAR sensor's accuracy and give us the option for the intensity visualization of our point clouds. The second will be Pix4D Catch, which will allow us to use the camera sensor as well as the LiDAR sensor to fuse both LiDAR and photogrammetry data together to create 3D models. I'm also gonna use the standard camera app with the iPhone 14 Pro so that I can get the 48 megapixel camera enabled and try to do some kind of image reconstruction with it. Not sure how well this will work, but it's worth a shot. So we're going to start mapping this playground right here on this side where target 3995 is. Then we'll come over to 96 and then wrap ourselves around till we get to this side where target 97 is. Then all the way down this blue rock climb thing is going to be target 3998. Back around to this metal pole at 3999 and ending on the same pole on the opposite side where we started at target 4000. The reason we're utilizing a surveying total station to measure the positions of all of these targets is that the total station provides us with the highest level of accuracy, giving us one angular second of error per thousand meters. This means that our accuracy levels should be under one millimeter, which is an acceptable accuracy level as a baseline coordinate for all of these targets. All right, so we're going to start with using 3D scanner app for the LiDAR scanning. All right, both phones are running. I'm going to come down to normal and change it to LiDAR advanced. Both will have high confidence points. Both will have two meters of range. We'll have no masking. And the resolution I have set to 11 millimeters. Okay, start here and record. Okay, very nice. Got this, we got this. Now again, we're not doing the full mapping project here. We're just testing the accuracy of the LiDAR sensor. Right. Coming around here finishing up at this pole and stop. Okay, and we'll go ahead and process out the mesh. All right, and there we go. Both projects have been processed. Now, again, we are more interested in the point cloud, but it's still nice to be able to see the visualization of the DSM on both of these phones. Very nice. There's about 9,000 more vertices on the 14 Pro than the 13 Pro, which tells me that there was just a little bit more data collected. Uh, possibly from the additional sensor help from the gyroscope and accelerometer. But nonetheless, both of these phones did pretty well in capturing the data. So let's go ahead and export. Now, if you wanna see the accuracy levels of both of these iPhones, make sure you stick around till the end where I'll be doing a comparative analysis of the distances between the targets in comparison to what we measured with the surveying total station. All right, now we're going to be utilizing Pix4D Catch to use both the LiDAR sensor as well as the camera sensors to do photogrammetry on this playground right here. All right, I'm gonna open up Pix4D Catch. And there we go, Pix4D Catch is running on both phones. We're gonna start here and 
start recording. And I want to get as much detail here of this playground, so I'm going to be going nice and slow, trying to capture as much detail as possible to give both of these phones a fair chance in reconstructing this project. Very good. Nice and slow here, trying to get every aspect this playground and it looks like the iPhone 14 Pro has a wider lens for its data collection which means it can see more maybe that's just a visualization thing I'm not sure we'll find out once we get through all the data there we go finish up strong here we are going to stop to save these projects. Okay, here we are. Both projects are saved. Now this right here is the LiDAR scan. So this does not include the images that we captured. We'll have to process that in Pix4D-Matic. But just as an initial look here, the 3D reconstruction using the LiDAR sensors both look pretty similar. Now the iPhone 14 Pro actually took less pictures with 73 images in comparison to the iPhone 13 Pro at 84 images. We'll see how that plays out when processing the data. In terms of accuracy, it looks like the iPhone 13 Pro has slightly more horizontal accuracy coming in at 15.09 feet in comparison to the iPhone 14 Pro at 15.48 feet. Again, these are really high numbers compared to other surveying equipment, but we're using just standard uh, GPS positioning. There are no RTK corrections happening here. And the iPhone 14 Pro has a slightly better vertical accuracy than the iPhone 13 Pro. Uh, but again, at 11 feet, it's not necessarily the greatest thing in the world. We're more so concerned about the relative accuracy of the sensors rather than the absolute positional accuracy that we get from the GNSS receivers. Okay, great. I'm going to upload both of these. And finally, I want to test the iPhone 14 Pro 48 megapixel camera and I have to use the standard Apple camera app to do so so we can't use any of the third-party apps and I want to see just how well the resolution is and if it'll make a difference in 3d reconstruction using photogrammetry all right I've got the standard camera app open now and I'm going to enable the raw feature which will allow us to take pictures using the 48 megapixel camera now because there is no timed interval feature on the standard camera app I'm gonna have to press the camera shutter button every time I want to take a picture so this is gonna be a little bit slower and I've got to make sure that I do this in a timely fashion so here we go let's go ahead and get started start here and I will take the first picture okay I'm gonna back up a little I'm gonna move really slow here so that I can get as many images as possible here we go a lot of images here <laughs> nice and slow coming around here towards the end still moving as slow as I can try to capture as many images as possible Okay, I think that should be good. And now I've captured a bunch of images here going around the playground. And so we'll be bringing these images in and doing a entirely separate model. I may even use the targets as control points to try to tighten up the model. And I just want to see if we can use the 48 megapixel camera to do some kind of photogrammetry with the iPhone 14 Pro. All right, now that we've finished mapping this entire playground using these iPhones, let's go ahead and process this data and see how it all turned out. Before we process this data, I want to tell you about the GeoWeek 2023 conference taking place in Denver, Colorado on February 13th to the 15th. The Geospatial industry is gathering together to network and to meet and learn about all sorts of new technology in the geospatial world. I'm talking about professional surveyors, certified photogrammetrists, LIDAR experts, hydrographic and bathymetric specialists. Anything that has to do with the geospatial industry is going to be at GeoWeek. If you guys are looking to get a free exhibit hall pass valued at $150, then check out the link in the description or use code RAMI100. If you're looking to get a full conference pass using that same link, we'll get you $100 off of your package. Again, check out the link in the description, use code RAMI100, and I hope to see you guys all at GeoWeek 2023. All right, here we go. Back to work. All right, let's talk about the data that we've processed. I started by opening up Cloud Compare and taking the LiDAR scans from the 3D scanner app for both the iPhone 13 Pro and 14 Pro. As you can see here, this is the iPhone 13 Pro's intensity point cloud from the LiDAR sensor. This turned out really, really crisp. I like it. And I'm going to find the position of all the targets here and reference them to the coordinates from the total station to see the relative differences. Once I finish with the 13 Pro LiDAR point cloud, I'll open up the iPhone 14 Pro LiDAR point cloud. And as you can see, it looks pretty 
similar, very good returns, and I'm going to repeat the process with the targets. Next, I'm gonna use Pix4D Matic to process the imagery as well as the LiDAR scan together to create our 3D models. I wanted to quickly go over the absolute positioning just so you can see where we are right now in terms of the technology for both of these phones. In terms of the iPhone 13 Pro, it looks like the absolute accuracy is well over 30 feet, which is expected because we don't have any RTK corrections to give us high accuracy positioning. If I close this out and come over here to the iPhone 14 Pro, and you can see this definitely looks a lot closer from just initially looking. And when I open this up, we have absolute differences of about 10 feet, which is significantly better than the iPhone 13 Pro. Again, I'm not doing any additional georeferencing here. This is just straight out of the iPhone's GNSS receivers. So we can tell that there has been an improvement on the GPS positioning of the iPhone 14 Pro over the 13 Pro. Now I've processed out the point clouds for both of these sites. And if we look at the iPhone 13 Pro, you can see this looks really, really clear, really, really crisp. Looking around here, I can see that there's definitely a ton of detail and the 3D reconstruction is actually really, really nice. We definitely do have some noise if I zoom in here and look around these poles, um, especially up at the top, you can see where there's some sky filtering issues. Even with the sky filtering feature on it, Pix4D Matic, it still struggled to clean up all of those points. Nonetheless though, we could definitely make out what this structure is. I mean, this is a pretty complex structure. It wasn't something that was flat and easy. Um, I wanted something complicated and the iPhone 13 Pro did a really good job of reconstructing it. Now, switching over to the iPhone 14 Pro, if we take a look here, this looks pretty similar to the iPhone 13 Pro, and that's because we're using the same 12 megapixel camera and the same LiDAR sensor. There really wasn't an upgrade on these sensors, unfortunately, and we cannot use the 48 megapixel camera with third-party applications, so we're stuck using the 12 megapixel camera, which is why we see a pretty similar result between the iPhone 14 Pro and the 13 Pro. Nonetheless, I'm pretty impressed with this. The fact that it was able to reconstruct that playground is a pretty good sign that both of these phones are great candidates for 3D modeling. Now, with the 14 Pro's 48 megapixel camera, I created a job with Pix4D Matic for the 48 megapixel camera, and the file extension for these images is a DNG file extension. Unfortunately, Pix4D Matic was unable to accept these DNG file extensions, so I went ahead and converted everything over to JPEG, and as a JPEG file, Pix4D Matic was able to accept these images. However, there was an error that I just couldn't quite make out. I really not sure what the problem is, but at any rate, I went into the processing menus and when I tried to calibrate the project, I was unable to do so. So I figured that Pix4D Matic is just not gonna be able to figure this one out. I went to the original Pix4D Mapper software and I was able to bring in the images and I was able to start the process. I even geo-referenced these control points. And I must say, when I went into the basic editor, looking at how crisp and high resolution these images were, were incredible. I mean, you could read those numbers that are on the targets, really, really clear imagery. And it's really exciting to see where the technology might go in the future with higher resolution cameras. However, I'm sad to say, after processing this on Pix4D Mapper, I was left with really not much. I really wasn't able to make out any of the features, a little bit of the rock wall, but after that, I mean, everything kind of was just all over the place. It definitely struggled with processing this, and I'm just going to assume that it's gonna be very difficult to do this unless you're using a third-party app like Pix4D Catch. So we can't use the 48 megapixel camera just yet, but maybe we will in the future. All right, now let's analyze the accuracies of all these data sets. The first thing we see here are the coordinates of all the control points using the total station. I put these in blue because these are control points, and these are the points that we're gonna base all of our accuracies on. And then these are the extracted coordinates from the iPhone 13 Pro's LiDAR sensor, the 13 Pro camera sensor, the 14 Pro LiDAR sensor, and the 14 Pro camera. I then wanted to find the relative distances between each of these points. So right here, these are the relative distances between uh, the points on the total station. Again, these are in blue because these are the distances that we're basing everything off of. So these are going to be baseline distances. These are the same distances off of the 13 Pro LiDAR, the 13 Pro camera, the 14 Pro LiDAR, and the 14 Pro camera. The first thing I wanted to see is the accuracy between the LiDAR and camera sensor on both of these phones. A camera to LiDAR calibration needs to take place internally, and I wanted to see if the same process was happening with both of these phones and if there was any discrepancies between both sensors. Between the camera and LiDAR sensor on the iPhone 13 Pro, we can see that there are discrepancies between one and two tenths of a foot. Some areas are close to four tenths of a foot. I mean, 
mean, in some areas are like right on. So I can see that there's a little bit of shift um, between the camera and the LiDAR. This isn't like super crucial because you can always just georeference the control points and fix all that. But just looking at this between one and two tenths of a foot of error between the camera and LiDAR on the same phone, it's not the best, but it's not horrible. Now this is where things uh, get really interesting. I did the same thing with the iPhone 14 Pro and here's what I got. The iPhone 14 Pro crushed it. I mean, everything is like under 100th with the exception of this point, which I think is the same point. Yeah, yeah, this is the same point that we had four tenths on. It looks like there is five hundredths here, but look at these results. I mean, most of these are under a hundredth of a foot, which means the iPhone 14 Pro's camera to LiDAR calibration is much more enhanced than the 13 Pro. That's awesome. I love that. That's really, really good to know that both of these sensors are working together in a much more accurate fashion. I did the same thing with the distances. This is going to be exactly the same. It's just different way of looking at it. Again, you see everything's under a hundredth pretty much. Some spots are a little more, but still very impressive on the iPhone 14 Pro. Now, the most important test is the relative distance accuracy between the total stations and both iPhones. So the total RMS error for the iPhone 13 Pro's LiDAR sensor is at 12.3 feet. That's not horrible. Again, this is data that we're not georeferencing any control points to. This is just raw data that comes out of the iPhone 13 Pro. And 12.3 feet is not horrible for just a starting point that you can then later adjust. The 13 Pro's camera sensor has a pretty similar result at 12.5 feet. So 12 and a half feet for the camera sensor as well. Again, if both of these sensors are really close to each other and we saw one to two tenths of discrepancy, I expect there to be the same discrepancy in the relative distance error. So 12 and a half feet, not horrible for the 13 Pro. Um, definitely a good starting point for any mapping project. However, it's not as good as the 14 Pro. The 14 Pro's LiDAR sensor came in at 4.8 feet, more than half as good as the 13 Pro's LiDAR sensor. And the 14 Pro's camera is at 4.85, only three and a half hundredths difference between the LiDAR and the camera sensor, which means the iPhone 14 Pro has been enhanced for mapping capabilities. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out this video right here to learn more about iPhone georeferencing with the LiDAR sensor.